you know, the last point in that, uh, we, we need to talk about the resurrection. Now, Jesus Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again. Now, again, I don't want to get too deep into this, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'll quickly read it, it explains a bit about that if there's no resurrection, then, then our, our faith, our hope is, is in vain. Um, we need to believe also in the resurrection of Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't want to get started on them, but they do not believe in the resurrection. There are people in the Bible that the Lord Jesus talks about that were the same. They were called the Sadducees. They did not believe in any resurrection. And, and uh, First Corinthians 15 says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching uh, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. And then further down it says, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, and man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Because of Adam's sin, then we've got a sin nature, we're, we're all inherently sinners. But because of Christ and his obedience, and his death, burial, and resurrection, all shall be made alive. There's the, the, the resurrection is taught, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Now, is the resurrection taught in the Old Testament? There's some very interesting verses. We're going to look at the, the book of, of Job now. Uh, Job 14, 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, that's the day that you die, will I wait till my change come. That's an interesting verse. Job here knew without mentioning anything directly that he was going to be changed. He was going to get a glorified body, as we will in heaven. And then further on in Job, in chapter 19, verse 25, it says, For I know that my Redeemer, who's, who's our Redeemer? The Lord Jesus Christ. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see for myself, mine eyes shall behold, not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job knew that when he died, he was go when he's going to heaven, he would get a glorified body, a body that would never get sick. He was going to be resurrected. And th th this, there's, there's more than this just in the Old Testament about the resurrection. A very famous passage in the Bible, we'll know as the, the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel 37, you can turn there if you want, with me, Ezekiel 37, starting at verse 4, it says, And he said unto me, this is the Lord speaking to Ezekiel, Prophesy, that preach or speak to them, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, that's sinews is, um, is that like joints, muscle, things like that, round the bones, I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Lord. Remember, these are bones that are dead in the ground, and God's saying he's going to raise them up, he's going to put muscle and joints and, and flesh upon them, and cover them with skin, and put breath in them, and ye shall live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld... Lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the fourth winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. Now these bones are dead people, and that they may live. So I prophesied, prophesied, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So this this valley of dry bones, just dead bodies, bones, has suddenly became flesh again and been raised up. And it's like, if you can imagine, across a field, a big army of people. Then said, then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So here's the application that God is explaining why this is here, why he's doing this to Ezekiel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore I prophesied and said to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, which have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of the graves. There's the resurrection taught in 
the Old Testament.